I'm scared because not that I don't know the word. Yeah. But I want to do right by God's people. Amen. I want to say exactly what God says. Mm. I, I don't want to add nor subtract. Mm. While I stand here for however long, ah. I am aware that I have the power to destroy a life. Mm. Yeah. And so I get scared. <sighs> Again, not scared to preach, but scared to handle the word. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm asking you to pray for me this morning. Yeah. Hallelujah. That whatever I say, whatever I do, yeah. it is done to bring honor and glory to the name of the Lord. Yeah. This morning I have with me, um, we call her Sister Pat, uh, Mrs. Patricia Hamilton Beckford. Um, stand back, please. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Um, she's just one of the, the younger ones that I'm pushing in the spirit realm. Amen. Yeah. We yeah. have a responsibility to pass the battle on. Amen. Uh, and I do it to the best of my ability. Yeah. I don't work with a whole lot of people. I just want one or two just to grasp the vision. Mm. And if they grasp it, I know Amen. they're set for life. Amen. You yeah. understand me? I, I don't have an entourage. I don't have somebody carrying my Bible or my briefcase. That, that's not me. Yeah. Yeah. I want people in the ministry. <laughs> I, I want kingdom workers. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. So this morning I'm here to glorify the name of the Lord. Amen. I want to thank yeah. Pastor Mandler and all those who have been responsible for me being here today. May God bless you. And may the Lord minister to you, grant you blessings untold in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'll be honest with you also, uh, since I was asked to speak here, I have been asking the Lord what, yeah. what, mm. I've been, preachers will know this, I've been lying up in the bed with my head the wrong way. <laughs> I've been walking back and forth yeah. because I want yeah. to hear yeah. what God has to say. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Coming in the car yesterday, I said to Sister Patricia, I still don't have a word. Yeah. Yeah. We got in here about one o'clock this morning oh. and I said, I'm going to sleep. But the Lord woke yeah. me up uh, and he began to minister. Hallelujah. I was like, Hallelujah. why did he give me this all the time? Yeah. Yeah. I could have, you know, escaped the sleepless night. Mm -hmm. ah. But I thank God when he speaks, I know it is him. Yeah. 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 Now, if you came to this event mm -hmm. looking for simply your needs to be met, mm -hmm. you've come to the wrong thing. Oh, ah. If you came simply because Every year we do this, yeah. Yeah. you just came for an event. Yeah. Yeah. If you came expecting a dynamic preacher mm. who would yeah. turn you upside down and inside out, mm. you just came for the event. Yeah. Yeah. But if you came this morning yeah. and you said to the Lord, I want an experience with you. Come, let's talk. We will talk this morning. If you said to the Lord, I'm leaving wherever I'm leaving from. Yeah. And I'm coming to Birmingham, West Brom, because I want an experience with you. You've come to the right place. We're on the right page because this is what the Lord said to me. I want my people to have an experience. Oh, now, don't get me wrong. You've had experiences with other people before. Mm -hmm. Minister, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about an inherent experience, yeah. an unshakable yeah. experience Jesus. that yeah. you can walk away oh, saying, I'll never be the oh, same yeah. again. Yeah. I know I'll never be the same oh, again. Oh, <laughs> Not because of me, yeah. but yeah. because of the prayer you've been praying. Yeah. 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 Because of the times you've been asking God, speak Lord. Mm. Because right. of the times you came to these events yeah. and you walked away ah. saying, I got nothing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But you said, I'm coming again, Lord. Mm, yeah. Yeah. He's going to honor you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Come go with me this morning Amen. to the book of 1 Samuel. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 1 Samuel chapter 4. Hmm. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I'm going to read from verse 10. <coughs> 
First Samuel chapter 4. Every one of us know this scripture. And the Philistines fought, and Israel was smitten, and they fled everyone unto his tent. And there was a very great slaughter, for there fell of Israel 30,000 footmen. And the ark of God was taken, and the two sons of, Huf of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were slain. And there ran a man of Benjamin out of the army and came to Shiloh the same day with his clothes rent and with earth upon his head. And when he came, Lord Eli sat upon a seat by the wayside watching for his heart trembled for the ark of God. When the man came into the city and told it, the city cried out. And when Eli heard the noise of the crying, he said, What meaneth the noise of this turmoil? And the man came in hastily and told Eli. Now Eli was 90 and 8 years old and his eyes were dim that he could not see. And the man said unto Eli, I am he that came out of the army. I fled today out of the army. And he said, what is done there, my son? And the messenger answered and said, Israel is fled before the Philistine. And there had also been a great slaughter among the people. And thy two sons also, Hophni and Phinehas, are dead and the ark of God is taken. Yeah. And it came to pass when he made mention of the ark of God that he fell from off the seat backward by the side of the gate and his neck broke and he died for he was an old man and heavy and he had judged Israel 40 years. And his daughter in Nophihinus' his wife was with child near to be delivered and when she heard the tidings that the ark of God was taken and that her father-in-law and her husband were dead, she bowed herself and travailed for her pains came upon her. Yeah. And about that time of her death, the women that stood by her said unto her, Fear not, for thou hast born a son. But she answered not, neither did she regard it. And she named the child Ichabod, saying, The glory is departed from Israel, mm, yeah. because the ark of God was taken, mm, yeah. and because of her father and her husband. And she said, The glory is departed from Israel, for the ark of God mm. was taken. Oh God, we ask him today to bless the reading of his word Amen. and make our hearts uh, so open that he would hear what we, he has to say to us today. If you don't agree with me today that the ark of God, the presence of God is missing from the church, then I will have to say to you, come let's talk. The Bible says, that Eli was 90 and 8 years old and his eyes were dim that he couldn't see. But he heard the noise. Yeah. Yeah. And when he inquired, he was told that the ark of God was taken and his two sons was there. The Bible specifically says, when he heard that the ark of God was taken, oh. the Bible says he fell over backwards and he died. Yeah. Yeah. How many of us have become so accustomed? To being in church, around church, in our home lives without the presence of God. Mm. And we feel no way ah. different. Ah. Many of us don't understand what Eli understood. Eli understood the very meaning of the ark of God. You see, the ark of God wasn't God, but it simulated the presence of God. Amen. And Eli understood that as long as the ark of God was present, his presence was ruling and reigning and abiding. Yeah. Ah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Now if you look at the ark of God, it was just an oblong box made out of acacia wood and overlaid with gold. And in this box, there were just three items, Aaron's rod that body, the tablet of the law, and the pottage of manna. The tablet of the law represents that God has laws which we must all abide by. You see, yeah. when the children of Israel were coming out of Egypt, God had to make a nation out of them. Yeah. Because they were a mob. And in order to bring a mob together and make a nation out of them, he had to give them rules and laws to abide by. Yeah. If we ah. don't have laws, yeah. if we don't have rules, we, come, we become like crazy people. Yeah. We become yeah. like crabs in a barrel. So we have laws, we have rules that help to pe keep us in and border us in. Mm. Yeah. The pottage of manna was simply God being their Jehovah Jireh. As they wandered 40 years in the wilderness, glory to God. That pottage of manna, as simple as it seems, it reminded them of his grace and his mercy, his provision, Jehovah Jireh, the way he was able to take them through the wilderness for 40 years and their clothes didn't wear out and their shoes didn't wear out. They wanted water. Yeah. He provided water. Whatever they needed, he was 
was Jehovah Jireh. So that pottage wow. of manna represented God being their God all the way. Wow. And that's why we say wow. he's able to save, he's able to keep, he's able to satisfy. My God is able, abundantly able. Yeah. All of our needs to supply the pottage of manna reminds me of the provision of God. Amen. And Aaron's rod that but it simply reminds us that God can take any dead thing and bring it back to life. Wow. Yeah. Hallelujah. He has the power to breathe life again. So this morning if you came in here and you gasping for your last breath as a fish out of water, let me say to you this morning, God is able to come in and bring you back to life and put you back on your feet again. He's able, even if you're dead and you're buried and you're stinking, he's able to speak the word and you will arise in the name of Jesus. That's if you came for an experience. If you came for an event, mm. you'd be in Lord. trouble. My God. But if you say, any way you bless me, Lord, Jesus. I'll be satisfied. Amen. Amen. One of the reasons why I wear my hair down when I come to church is because I don't want nothing falling. Mm. It's already ah. falling. Ah. So ah. if God has to bless me, yeah. it's done already. Yeah. I wear my clothes long yeah. so I don't ah. have to be embarrassed. Yeah. Amen. I wear it loose yeah. Yeah. so I can do what I have to do. Amen. So when I come to the house of God, it's not Amen. about posturing, it's positioning. Amen. I'm saying, God, I'm here. Amen. I'm here to worship. I'm here to bow down. I'm here to say, You're my God. And when I make contact with you, everything that is dead on the inside must come back to life. If you don't believe me that the presence of God is missing from the church. Yeah. I want you to look around. Yeah. Open your eyes in the house of God and look around. You can tell exactly what happens from the beginning to the ending of the service. No room is left for the Holy Spirit. Ah. The ark of God. When the children of Israel knew that the ark of God was resting, they had confidence. Well, when you know he's walking right beside you, you can do anything. Yeah. I, I tell yeah. you all, they tell me my, my height is five foot three, but I'm six foot in the spirit. Yeah. Oh, glory to God. For oh, he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or even think, according to the power that worketh within us. We've got to know what we've got, yeah, who we've yeah. got, whose we are, yeah, and as we yeah. understand it, walk in it. Amen. Yeah. The Bible says uh, the uh, children of Israel, uh, they fought with the Philistines. Mm -hmm. Now the uh, Philistines were seafaring people. Mm -hmm. They worshipped the god Dagon. And uh, the Philistines, they waited for the moment when the children, of, the Israel children were, of Israel were the weakest. Yeah, yeah. Hear me today. The devil knows your lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. You can because he knows where you live. Yeah. He knows yeah. how you behave. Yeah. Just as we yeah. have an angel yeah. from the Lord who encamps round about us, Satan has his image, his imps who trail us, they troll us, they check us, and they report back. Because Satan is an omnipresent, so he depends on his, his trolls, yeah. he depends on his imps, yeah. he depends on his demons that he has yeah. assigned to us. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. The children of Israel constantly sinned against God. Mm. And, and the Philistines took the time when they were at their weakest. Yeah. Yeah. And he whipped them thoroughly. Yeah. Hear me today. When your Holy Ghost is low, mm. other people may not know because you still know how to shander. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you still yeah. know how to hate and see God. You still know how to shake it and make it look as if something is going on. But the devil knows ain't nothing yeah. going on. You know yeah. ain't nothing going on. But that is the time he comes in and he beats you down into the ground. But I say to you today, you came to this weekend for an experience. God is going to turn it around. He's going to turn it around. In the name of Jesus, he's going to turn it around. The Bible says, the ark of God was taken. I don't know. I don't know if you understand. If you're accustomed to having 
God. Yeah. You feel like a crazy woman. You feel as if you're losing your mind. Am I talking to myself? Am I talking about myself? Let me talk about me. When I come and feel him, I say like David, Oh, cast me not away from that presence. And take not that Holy Spirit from me. God, if you're ever going to leave me, you can as well kill me. For there is no life without Jesus Christ. There is no peace without Jesus Christ. He makes the difference. He makes the difference coming in. And he makes the difference going up. If you ever heard him and you lost him, you are a most miserable person. That's why you behave the way you do. That's why you act crazy. That's why you kick the dog and beat up the cat. Because you can't take it out on God. Oh, this morning, he can revive you again. Oh, as we cry out to him, revive that work of God in the midst of the years. Hallelujah. The Bible says, the ark of God was taken. The Bible says, Eli had two sons, Hophni and Phinehas. In local language, these guys were streetwise and otherwise. <laughs> they committed fornication yeah. at the temple door. They desecrated the vessels of God. They desecrated the temple. And the father was a weakling. Hear me this morning. Yeah. You want to be a father powerful in ministry? But it's not just about ministry. If you can't control your own, you're in trouble. Yeah. Ah, Jesus. Help me somebody. Yeah. And all the men looking at me. Sir. Yeah. Yeah. Eli was a great father, a great leader, but he was ah. a poor father. Yeah. David was a great man of war. David established a great economic situation in Jerusalem, yet David was a poor father. You've got to balance it. You're a man of God, not just in the church, to tell people how yeah. to live. You're a man of God to take control of your kids. Your kids can't look like rasters when you yeah. tell everybody has come clean. Oh, that way this one is going to be fire. Amen. Because Ichabod has stepped in. Mm. Every mm. crazy thing is happening in the house of God. Mm. Yeah. Things that we used to frown upon before, mm. ah. we let it slip. Because it's the time we're living in. And because people no longer want to come to the house of God, we become desperate and we accept anything. Yeah. That's when the spirit of God is missing. Yes. That's when the anointing is no longer around. Mm. You accept anything. But my cry this morning to all of us, yeah. if yeah. God be for you, yeah. who can be against you? Yeah. If you stand yeah. for truth and righteousness, yeah. God is going to yeah. walk beside you. Eli was a great man of God, but he was a poor father. He yeah. didn't chastise. He didn't discipline his children. Hear me this morning, parents. Yeah. You calling on Jesus, but your children are wayward. Oh, God, help me today. It's going to go quiet in here. But mm. we want an experience. You've got to teach your children, not just to love church, but to love the God of the church. Yeah. You're not just going to tell them, yeah. read the Bible. Teach them the love of the Bible. Yeah. No, not, not just to preach them verbatim. Not just to preach at them. Not just to tell them, go and pray, but get an environment yes. that you can encourage your children to love the God of the Bible, Amen. to love the God of your church. Yeah. Don't Amen. just tell them, go to church. Mm. Let them see the joy that is in the church. Yeah. Ah. When the Spirit of God has left the church, Jesus. Yeah. we do our own thing. Yeah. Yeah. We instill our own strategies. We try to make the young people serve God on our conditions. We put things in place for the children to serve God. Are you understanding where I'm going this morning? Yeah. Yeah. I got saved in 1973. Do the match. That's a long time ago. We didn't have praise and worship. We had an old box guitar. But you know what? My pastor taught me to love God. My pastor taught yeah, me to run after yeah. God. And that's yeah. what I try to put into those around me. Run after him with everything you've got. For when the music has died down, yeah. when the singing is gone, yeah. when the praise and worship people yeah. walk out of the yeah. church, 
Jesus remains. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Yeah. Many of you come to church. Ah. And if the praise and worship team isn't singing, you like this. My Lord. Yeah. You don't know what to do. Yeah. If yeah. you don't have music, you don't know what to do. We in trouble. Mm. Ah. Are we in trouble? Ah. If the praise ah. and worship leader ah. feels, yeah. I don't feel like singing today. Yeah. Yeah. We in trouble. Yeah. Ah. Because flesh is ruling. Flesh is ah. reigning. Flesh is showing itself. And it's egrandizing all over the place. Yeah. And everybody yeah. wants their five minutes in the spotlight. Yeah. 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 When the Spirit of God is in the church, whether we have praise and worship no. or we don't have praise and worship, see, I, I started going to Zimbabwe in the years when you would have just the mothers going like this. And then you would hear a lone voice from the congregation. We call it call and we can. Ah. So you would hear, uh, there was a child by the name of Loveness. Yeah. She used to go to Enjoyer yeah. Luvene, yeah. one of the Enjoy. two of them. And you would hear her voice. Yeah. And as her yeah. voice rang out, you would hear the, the congregation just pick it up and then somebody else would follow. Now you have to have praise and worship. Mm. The devil is a liar. Where are you worshiping? Ah. If you come into the house of God and there is no singing, you stand like this. You sit like this. You say, how are you doing? I like your outfit. So what's been happening to you? You forget that you're in the house of God. You forget, here I am to praise. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to worship. Here I am to say that you're my God. Hallelujah. There was a time we came in to the house of God and there was a word. For God's people. You see, the sons of Issachar were in operation in the house of God. The sons of Issachar belonged to the Levi true. And as they sat in the presence of God's people, they would hear a word from God. Where are the Levites in the house of God? Where are the Levites yeah. who are listening to what God has to say? You see, we're living in a pandemic. We're living in uncertain times. I, 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 I told the Lord, I don't want to preach on the pandemic because everybody's preaching on the pandemic. I want to hear what you have to say. But we're living in a pandemic time when people are scared out of their wits and they need a word from the Lord. Yeah. We need a sense of direction from the Lord. And because we are not availing ourselves to God, we've got these crooks, yeah. these yeah. five by nights. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking yeah. for words. Yeah. <laughs> these criminals yeah. who come into our church and give us false hope. Yeah. They tell us lies yeah. in Jesus' name. Yeah. I, I'm reminded about the Samaritan woman. When the man of God went to prophesy to her, she said, him, don't lie to me, man of God. It's almost as if she was saying, I've been here before. Yeah. You have been here before. Yeah. Because yeah. the Spirit of God is not operating in the house of God like you used to. You have become victims of people. People can come in and prophesy and say any day, no, God is going to do this. And any day you know God is going to do this, and you're still waiting 10 years down the road. Yeah. 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 When the ark of God is in the house of God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> let's go when Solomon dedicated the temple. Yeah. Yeah. When the ark of God was put in its oh, rightful oh, place. Yeah. And they offered oh, worship yeah. unto God. Yeah. Yeah. There was singing. There was praising, there was glorifying God. Everybody was on one accord. Yeah. When the Spirit of God steps out of our church, because you know He does, you know He lifts, you know He takes ah. His leave. Ah. Because wherever He's not welcome, He's yeah. going to slip out. Yeah. Glory to God. Ah. And because yeah. He slipped out in our churches, we are going through the same old, same old. The same routine. Yeah. I, I, I'm not talking to those of you this morning who don't want change. Yeah. Yeah. You like your routine. You like the mundaneness of life. You like going around and around in a circle. I, I'm not talking to you this morning. I'm talking to those who say, I want something better. I, I'm looking at what I've got and I'm saying, God, I want something better. What do you want this morning? I want the Spirit of God to take his rightful place again. I want to see what I used to see in the days of you. And more than what I used to see, I want what it is for today. I want to see the Spirit of God moving. I want to see young men and young women serving God because He is God. Because the Spirit of 
God has lifted from most of our churches. Our young people serve God on their terms. Our young people pick and choose what they want about Christianity. Joshua said, if God be God, serve him. <laughs> He's saying to all of us, we've got a choice. If you say, I'm a Christian, if you say, I'm serving God, you take the Bible in its entirety. I don't care, uh, excuse me all, I don't care what other preachers say. You don't take half and drop half. You hold on to the word of God from Genesis to Revelation. You walk in the word. You hear what the word says and you abide by the word. This is the way that the spirit of God will come back into your life. Hallelujah. Because Amen. our young people refuse to submit to God. See, uh, the subculture of the world has invaded the church. Mm. The subculture of the world is attacking our young people. Yeah. And because the older folks have walked away from the presence of God, yeah. they are giving in to what the young people want, which is not simply Jesus. Mm -hmm. They want Jesus and something else. Mm -hmm. Let me say I'm a Christian. But I want something else with my Christianity. Don't expect me just to be a Christian. I want to be a Christian and some. It doesn't work. So you can't have, you cannot hold Jesus in one hand and hold Beyonce in the next hand. One gotta go. Amen. Amen. If you say you're serving God as a child of God, let's make a clear distinction. Yeah. I am a Christian, not on my terms, not what the world is saying to me, not what society is saying to me, but what the Bible says to me. Come out from among them and be separate and touch not the unclean thing. Let me say this to you, brethren. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered in the heart of man. What God has prepared for them that love him. You ain't seen nothing yet. Yeah, yeah. If I can challenge you this weekend yeah. to rise above you, yeah. rise yeah. above your own ideas, yeah. rise yeah. above your own ideologies, yeah. your theology, your philosophy, rise above it and see the God of the Bible, I guarantee you, yeah. you will have an experience yeah. second to none. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. Oh, glory to God. Amen. The Bible says, Hallelujah. when this woman heard, that her husband was dead, her father-in-law was dead, and the ark of God was taken. The Bible says she named the child Ichabod, meaning the glory has departed. Instead of giving him a lovely name like Jacob or, or something else which means laughter, some beautiful name, she called him Ichabod. Yeah. She named him according to how she saw the situation. Yeah. Why should I be rejoicing when the ark of God is no longer in the house of God? Why should I feel it's okay to have a feeling when the ark of God has left the house of God? The children of Israel, when the ark of God was taken, they cried, they moaned, they lifted up their voices, and they cried oh, out because the ark of God was taken. Yeah. When was the last time, as a child of God, you looked at the state of the church and you cried and said, God, what have we become? Yeah. Uh, I'm not talking about those who just come into Christianity. I feel, I feel a pain in my heart for those people coming into Christianity now. Because what they're being offered is not even, it, it, you put sadza before them and some chamolia and they will say, I take that. And then you put some beef jerky and they say, yeah, I prefer that. Because they don't know, that could be any wild animal there. Uh, they give up the sacks and the timolia for beef jerky when they don't know where it's coming from. Yeah. They don't know its origin. Jesus. It is our responsibility. Hear me, yeah. men of God, women of God. It is our responsibility uh, to keep the, the presence of God in the house of God. Amen. It is our responsibility. Amen. The day for you playing church is over. The day for you walking about talking about, I am Mr. So-and-so, and you better call me by my title. Do you know who I am? You forgot who you are? Mm. Ah, yeah. 
walking around with your chest stuck out uh, and if they don't call you by your title you get offended what have you got to bless the people what have you got to feed the people what have you got to help the people your title don't mean nothing if you cannot help God's people hallelujah it is our responsibility I'm not talking to the congregation now. I'm talking to the men and women of God I'm talking to those of you who said God called you, who went out before you were sent. I'm talking to you this morning. God's people coming sick and they leave sick. God's people coming hurting and they leave hurting. As a matter of fact, they're coming confused and they leave more confused because sometimes you don't rightly divide the word of God. You leave them confused because you pick a little bit of T.D. Jakes' message, and then you go across to Tony Evans, and then you, then you step over to Sidney Poitier. Ah, you're looking for anybody who would say something. Yeah. You're even bringing Denzel Washington in the congregation, and the people don't know where you're coming from. Are you a motivational speaker, or are you a man of God? Have you made a difference between clean and unclean? The people in the congregation are suffering because we refuse to be who we are. Yeah, yeah, man. So, have you ever seen a 60-year, yeah, 60-year-old woman in the tightest leggings, a leopard skin leggings, and her breast kind of outside and she's strutting down the road? And you know the saying, mutton dressed up as lamb, right? That's how we are. We believe that we are so powerful. We try to act so powerful, yeah. but we're just mutton dressed up. Ain't nothing going on in our lives. Yeah. We have nothing to offer. I I'm talking to pastors now. Excuse me, I don't mean to embarrass anybody. I don't mean to insult anybody, but the word of God is the word of God. Yeah. And if you really want an experience this yeah. evening yeah. or this morning, you're going to say, it's me, Lord. I I've been neglecting yes. God's people. Ah. I, I want to feed God's people. My, the Bible says the hungry sheep look up and they are fed. Yeah. Yeah. What are you feeding them, brethren? What, what are you feeding God's people when they come to the house of God, hurting from the world? The world is messed up. They're not looking for you to, to, to base your preaching on performance and, and salary. They're looking for you to base your preaching on the anointing of the word of God. They're coming to the house of God because the world has beaten them up. The world has kicked them in their teeth and they're coming to the house of God. Now listen to me. I know some of you crazy. Some of you Christians. Some of you sitting in the car. You act crazy. You act crazy. You give your pastors a hard time. That, yeah. That's where you are at. Some of you are crazy. But I'm talking about those who really want to serve God. Yeah. I, I'm talking about those ah. who really have a heart after God. Yeah. We have a responsibility, Pastor Mandler, Pastor Lisway, and every other pastor. We have a responsibility to feed God's people, to keep the ark of God in the house of God. Oh, so when they come in sick, man. they're not going to leave sick. Oh, we, they're going to leave their crutches behind them. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. An experience is different to an event. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> when the Lord said to Moses, yeah. Yeah. let the children of Israel go into their houses Amen. and daub the lentils of the door with blood. Mm -hmm. When the angel of the Lord passes and he sees the blood, I will pass over yeah. you. Isn't that the word, what the word says? Okay. I will pass over you. No, that was the Passover. And every year, they celebrated the Passover. Every year, you've been celebrating coming together. Yeah. Ah. And while God appreciates the coming together, he wants you to forget the events and get an experience mm. when you come together. Mm. Hallelujah. You mustn't leave this venue the same way you came. Yeah. Something yeah. must happen on the inside. There must be a change on the inner man. You cannot go back home the way you came. Brethren, some of you are struggling to stand on your own two feet. God says, I made it possible for you to come here this weekend. Yeah. Yeah. So that I can give you an experience that we can kick Ichabod out of your life. Kick Ichabod out of your home. Kick Ichabod out of your churches. Kick Ichabod out and cast him where he 
they belong. Yeah. That the Spirit of God can reign in our churches again. Hallelujah. 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 Ichabod has been ruling and reigning. Ichabod has put his feet up in our churches. And he's become quite at ease because nobody's troubling him. Yeah. It is just what the majority of people are doing. People are scared to step out and say, you know what? For God I live, for God I die. I don't care who's not following me, I'm going for God. People are scared. So we become part of the masses. We just follow what other people do. But I speak to you today. You and I can make the change. Once we have this experience with God today, we can make this change. We can make it happen. We can go back the way, the different way we came. We came in like people were coming to an event. But we're coming out with an experience that will be second to none. The Bible says, when the disciples enter the upper room, if you could remember what they were like, yeah. Yeah. they were scared of their own shadows. Yeah. Peter said, I go fishing. Yeah. The other said, I'm coming too. And they all went to their own business. But when Jesus spoke to them, and he said, tarry in Jerusalem until yeah. you be endued with power from on high. Those guys who went yeah. into the upper room, they came out with an experience. Yeah. Oh, we call it Pentecost. And we celebrate Pentecost. Yeah. That's yeah. an event. But don't forget the experience that followed the event. Yeah. Yeah. You come this weekend. I don't want you to forget the experience that can be had in this weekend. I don't want you to bypass the experience. Coming together not just to see each other, Coming together, not just to say, thank God, we made it through so far. That coming together to say, whoo, pandemic didn't take you. That, brethren, the mere fact that we made it here should be enough for us to say, all right, God, lay it on me. <coughs> lay it on me, I'm ready. Any way you rock me, I'm taking it. Yeah. Any way you do me, I'm yeah. taking it. I, I'm ready for the overflow because I want Ichabod out of my life. Oh, yeah, I want yeah. my prayer life oh, back. Yeah. I want my prayer life back. Yeah. I want the ability to praise yeah. from grateful yeah. heart. I want to hear your voice again. Oh, yeah, I want to yeah. wake up in the midnight hour and call upon your name. Oh, David yeah. said, oh, yeah. I prevented the dawning of the day while I called upon your name. Yeah. David yeah. said, I held back the dawn while I meditated on your word. That's what we do when Ichabod gets kicked out. Hallelujah. Many Christians only read their Bible in church on a Sunday morning. And that's when the preacher says, turn to Mark chapter 5. And you now get a chance to read Mark chapter 5. And the preacher is preaching, but you're so engrossed in Mark chapter 5. You can't hear a thing that the preacher is saying yeah. because you didn't read it before. You'll be like, whoa, I didn't see that. Yeah. Yeah. Wrong time. Oh, my Lord. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You watch oh, Netflix. Yeah. You do gaming. You do everything. When do you find time for the word of God? Yeah. Yeah. See, brethren, I, I, I don't preach for crowd. Yeah. I don't yeah. preach for likes. Yeah. I don't do blogs. I don't do what you call it, Instagram and all this. I, I don't do that. I want yeah. to just preach. And you know what, Pastor Amanda? Any man who talk too much is lie after a while. Nobody have every answer for everything. Yeah. Not because yeah. God uses you. You can blog on every situation. No, 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 man, no. Your podcast, you have the answer. This is the prayer. You got to pray to get your prayers answered. The devil is a liar. Jesus said, when you pray, pray our Father. Oh God, talk to your Father in heaven. This morning you realize that Ichabod has taken over. Ichabod has killed the Spirit of God. It is time you rise up in the Spirit and say, somebody's got to go. It ain't me. It is you leaving my life so that I can be the person that God has called me to be. Hallelujah to Jesus. In this day and time, we need men and women, boys and girls, who would stand up in the midst of adversity and say, I refuse to bend, bow, or burn. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm. Paul says, none of these things move me. He said, the Holy Spirit, witness to me in every city telling me that bounds and afflictions await me in Jerusalem. But tell you all the truth, none of these things move me. You can only say this 
when the Spirit of God is leading your life, when the Spirit of God is ruling, reigning, and abiding. Because sometimes you want to travel, and the enemy says, don't go, because such and such a thing is going to happen. God himself would show you what is awaiting you. But I thank God that when you obey God, God brings you out. Even if you die in a situation, God still brings you out in the spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I remember one of my many trips to Zimbabwe. We had a crusade in Ludwebe, a crusade that went on for months. After I left and came back to London, um, Pastor Bester, Sim, yeah, Pastor Bester, and <clears throat> Brother Happy, and the others carried it on. In this meeting, this woman, a demon-possessed woman, she came into the service. You know, you look at somebody and then you look away. And then I said, Lord, I'm feeling this deep depression on my right side. And the Lord said, this woman was sent to kill you. And I stood up and I looked at her. And I said, in the name of Jesus, it wasn't, it wasn't no highly strong atmosphere. It wasn't me doing stuff for people to say, wow, awesome God. Yeah. <laughs> I was protecting me, being honest. Yeah. <laughs> I said, in the name of Jesus, whatever plan you came with here tonight, it dies now. Amen. After they asked her testimony, she got up and she said, I came with a desire to kill that preacher but I couldn't get near her because there was a wall around her. Amen. When the Spirit of God is leading you, he protects you. Amen. If your faith in God gets you into trouble, your faith in God will get you out of trouble. Hallelujah. As long as the Spirit of God is resting, is ruling, and it's abiding. David said, cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Oh God, Virgin, when was the last time you prayed and you felt his presence near you? When was the last time you said, Jesus, and he said, I'm right here? When was the last time you said, come near Holy Spirit, and you felt him? Just moving in your direction. When was the last time you took time alone with God? Away from everybody else. Thank you, dear. You took time away from everybody else. And you just got into the presence of God. And you felt the Lord moving on your behalf. When was mm. the last time? Yeah. Yeah. I've come this weekend. Jesus. To lead you into an experience. Yeah. A life-changing experience. Yes. Some of you are on the ventilator. You're on the ventilator and the machine is yeah. breathing for you. Yeah. Your lungs, your spiritual lungs are no longer working. Yeah. God is going to take you off the ventilator. Yeah. In the name of take Jesus. You off in the name of Jesus. We're going to kick Ichabod out. I, I don't know about you, but I'm sick of Ichabod. I'm tired of Ichabod. I'm tired of Ichabod in the pulpit. Have you ever seen pastors come to church and just cross their legs in the pulpit? Won't take part in the worship? Are they coming just in time to preach? Have you ever been there? We could be praising God and calling fire down from heaven. And they just sit like this. And then when they get up to preach, we have to give them all the accolades. The devil is a liar. We want the spirit of God back in the house of God. So that every man would be subjected to the presence of God. So that when we stand, we know we stand on hallowed ground. When we stand up here, we understand the seriousness of the business. The, the case in hand is too serious. Our young people are walking out of the house of God. And when they stay, they stay on their terms. We want them to stay on the terms that God yeah. has set down. Amen. Not their terms. Not society's terms. Not some preacher from America's terms. Yeah. But what the Bible says. Yes. If God be for us, who can be against us? The Bible says she called his name Ichabod because she said, why should I rejoice when the presence of God is no longer around? Why should I be happy when the safety of God is no longer around? Yeah. Yeah. In our churches, young and old are molested. Yeah. And I mean, I'm not just talking about mentally molested. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're spiritually abused. Mm -hmm. They're physically abused. They're sexually abused. They're emotionally abused in the house of God. 
And this happens because the Spirit of God has lifted. Yeah. But come, Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit and pass this way. Come Holy Spirit and touch us again. Come Holy Spirit and rest upon us again. Come Holy Spirit, we need you, we need you, we need you. We need you like we've never needed you before. Oh God, in the name of Jesus. Come rest upon us, come rest upon us. Come rest upon us like you rested in the days of you. Come Holy Spirit, come and take your rightful place. Take your rightful place. Take your rightful place in our churches. Take your rightful place in our churches, my Lord. Hallelujah. Take your rightful place in the name of Jesus. Our young people wouldn't just play the instruments. And then when they finish playing or they yeah. finish praising, they go outside. Yeah. They wouldn't just go in the back of church and sit on absent of their emotions. When our young people are involved in the house of God, they would know that they're touching the sacred things. Yeah, and their whole yeah. life must be involved yeah. in the sacred things. Yeah. 